hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Tayo if you're here for the first time I say welcome um, I blog about my life as I migrated from Nigeria to Canada in 2020 I kind of share experiences of what I learned and uh, experiences that I have if you're returning I say thank you thank you for always coming back to watch my video So today's video, I'm going to answer to a question that I've, I've had to answer about, I don't want to exaggerate, a lot of times in the past eight months, and it's about how to apply to schools or colleges in, the, in Canada. So as most of you will know, I just, uh, I just finished up my graduate certificate program at Sheridan College. I studied HR and um, a lot of people have asked me, obviously because of the fact that I was in school, that how do I apply to school? I hear that I get grants. I hear that it's free of charge, all those kind of questions. So I will always have to have a call or you know send a message on the steps and all that. And I realized that why don't I just make a video? So when someone asks me that question, all I'll simply do is send them the link. So I decided to put this video together. So there are a couple of steps that you need to take to get into colleges and I've put them down in bullet points right in front of me. So if you see me going down, looking down, just know I'm checking my notes. I just want to avoid rambling. So the first step is decide on the cost of study, obviously. So for me, that was easy. I, I already made up my mind that I wanted to study HR. So it was just what next after deciding on studying HR. So decide what you want to study. I know people come here, decide to do supply chain, business analyst, all this kind of stuff. So just decide the course you want to do. The next step is you register on ontariocolleges.ca. There's a reason for that so um uh, and the next step will actually describe that but ontariocolleges.ca is kind of is a website that obviously as the name implies it helps students register to schools in um, colleges in canada so i know that I, i'm not sure but i believe that there could be a, a kind of website like this for university application i don't know but in terms of colleges you use ontariocolleges.ca. I know there's a there's a registration fee of about 90 bucks. When I did register, it was about 90, 90, 90 dollars, but I don't know if that has changed. So you need to check that on the website. So um, once your application is accepted on Ontario Ontario Colleges, you have the right to apply to at least five schools. So you can do three if you want. I know I did three when I was applying because I kind of I kind of narrowed down my options at the early stage. So you have an option to register to apply to at least five. One of the benefits of applying to Ontario Colleges is that those schools when they eventually give you the offer to come study they will require for you to send in your transcript and you can't send it yourself you have to send it either from your school or from west so a lot of us came into canada through the express entry or the provi provisional nomination route so we already use west for our evaluation of um, our credentials. So West already has installed the transcript that they received from your school, which is a good thing. However, what we submit for immigration is different from what we need for um, going back to school. So for schools, we need a cost by cost evaluation. We can still be done by West, yeah. So uh, one of the benefits of Ontario colleges is you pay West one time to send that trans this cost by cost evaluation to ontariocolleges.ca and Ontario colleges on your behalf will send your transcript to all the schools that require transcript that you have as you have sent in application for so that saves you money so even though you you have to still pay west for the cost by cost i think it was about hundred dollars to do that to do the cost cost by cost evaluation but it's a good thing because then you don't have to go back to your home country to get that those transcripts sent you know what i mean so west does all that work they already have it but even though they have it in another format they immediately change it back to what is required for the school application so west now sends on your behalf to the 
the schools that you are to, sorry to ontario colleges.ca who now you know shares it amongst the schools that you applied to so that brings me to my next point which which was actually register on west so i went ahead of it so you have to register on west as i said earlier you need to get your cost by cost evaluation so that that has been taken care of so um some of the schools will require for you to write an essay i know i wrote an essay for sheridan but the other schools that i applied to they didn't require that i write, write an essay so what you need to do is always refer back to your um profile on ontariocolleges.ca and the app too there's an app there's an app they have an app so it makes it very easy so always refer to your profile it, they, they they come they send in messages on what updates are, are required for you for the schools that you've applied to so you need to everything has your the, there's a time indication for everything you need to always check and just give them what they want part time so once you've sent in um your application your transcript your essays your essays if required you you now start to get the offers so what i always advise my friends um is that once you get offers before you accept kindly do your due diligence and how do you do that what i always advise is that reach out to your community of friends if you don't have community of friends yet linkedin is a very good resource go on linkedin go to the page of that school when you go to the page of that school you click on alumni so you click on alumni and you try to narrow it down to people that went to the school within 2000 yeah 2000 and 2020 which was last year I bet everything I have that you will find someone that looks like you that went to the school. So be it that you are Nigerian or you are from China or you're from any country, any country that you are from that you're watching this video. So what I always, what, what is advisable is for you to kind of reach out to that person, you know, in the form of like an informational uh, chat, you know, just say that you saw that they went to this school and you would like to find out about this school, uh, with regards to this course, hoping that they study or they study the same course. If for any reason you don't see anybody that you know, then you can reach out to anyone and just be polite. Send them a, um, a LinkedIn request, you know, and ensure that you, is, um, you send a message. Don't just send a request. You send a message saying that you want to find out about that college. So once you do and you're satisfied with what you get, uh, you've done your due diligence, then you can go ahead and accept one of the offers. You can't accept three. You have to accept one. So once that is done and you've accepted, obviously the school will send you an email giving you, congratulating you for making that choice and obviously telling you about next steps. So the next steps is always, most of it is always uh, administrative, but you now have to start thinking about how to pay for the education. And that's where OSAP comes in. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. So you can go ahead with the uh with the email or letter sent to you by the school you can go ahead and register on osap websites thankfully ontario ontario colleges.ca had you the pro, your profile on ontario colleges.ca can be linked to your osap uh profile so that way all the information about the schools the school that you actually accepted their offer will be moved to your osap profile and then you can start your registration from there so the registration is quite cumbersome i'm not gonna lie but if you went through the application to come to canada i don't think you can be overwhelmed it's just a bit of form filling and they ask about inf information about your family status how long have you been in canada your in income um information from back home your the evidence that you pay tax from back home wherever home is i know for us in nigeria we had to get evidence from um the tax the tax um authority that we actually did pay tax thankfully i paid tax my company paid tax so i could do that so you have to get all that information fill a bunch of forms but i mean it's worth it if they're going to give you some money so you can you have to do the work so once that is done your application is filled you fill the form then you start to get communications and communication and messages from the osap the it's called national oh now i just keep my mind but i'm going to put up here the name of the um authority that is responsible for that so they start to send you information 
and they ask questions if they need further clarification based on things that you filled on the form they will ask you and then you expect everything is time sensitive you're expected to respond back immediately you know because I, 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 you know you are the one trying to get something from them so i expect that you respond immediately eventually the on your osa profile you you get a message telling you that based on all the information that you shared this is how much money will be given to you so the money given to you will be divided into two there's going to be a part which is the grant that is given to you by the government of canada and there's a part of it which is given to you as a loan so the grant part of it would definitely include the full amount of your school fees and some more depending on your status in terms of your income status in your house is anybody working is no, is, is it that nobody's working all that sort of stuff so and the i'll just inform you that the full amount of your school fees would be paid directly to the school they don't want to hear stories that you got the money and then you spent it or something happened to it so they pay directly to the school but at this point they share they share with you an estimate of what you should expect so they haven't given you the money they're just sharing with you an estimate of what to expect so what people what we expected to do is okay well good with what we're expecting this is grant this is loan but honestly i don't want to start my canadian journey with taking loan from the government so it's a choice so the loan isn't by force you don't have to accept it by force what you need to do is to decide within yourself whether or not you need the loan so if for example there's no income in the family you might want to take the loan and then you know use it while you're in school full time also they, they are also put into consideration whether you are do, going to school full time and part time so you are only eligible to get osap if you're taking 70 i think 60 to 70 percent of uh coursework i'm not sure now so i think i'll do the research and insert it here while, when i'm posting this video so um i took 70 percent more than 70 percent coursework because i went to school full time so i was eligible so i also you also make the decision whether or not to take the loan so if you decide to take the loan you you are expected to start paying back the loan six months half after you graduate from school so they give you um a grace period hoping that you get your acts together and you get a job within six months and then you start to repay back the government um some of the money from the you know the loan you 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 took i think that there's also provision for if you don't get the job blah 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 but i really don't know much about that but i mean that is after you're finished school anyway we're talking about before so the next thing now is uh so you accept or reject the loan whatever you decide first week of school for me it was i started school on the 14th of september so the week of the 14th or the week before actually i got a notification from on my profile in school that my fees have been paid for and i could just download the receipt so they paid directly to the school and then the balance of it whether or not you accept the loan but the balance of the grant you just suddenly hear in your bank account and you get the money in it because you have put in all that details when you were filling the phone form so it's very exciting so um within this period you probably be getting communication from the financial aid department in your school so i think all schools have a financial aid department so they are the ones that lay li li liaise with uh, the authority that actually gives the osap and with you so there's, there's a middleman so if you have any challenges or if you if you feel like something is wrong you can actually reach out to them you have a profile number they'll trace all your information and they have a way they have a way they, they can reach out to the authority to, on your behalf if there's a need i would just mention here that um in terms of the school fees depending on the number of semesters that your course and like for me I, I had two semesters so the first semester fees was paid in september second semester fees was paid in january and that's how the disbursement of the the funds will be made to you so even if or whether or not you take the loan or not and the rem uh, the remainder of the grant will be given to you in two tranches first semester second semester depending on how your schoolwork is divided so i hope with this few points of mine 
I've been able to cover how it is possible to actually go to school and um, in Canada or co colleges in Canada uh, while taking the OSAP and uh, loan and grant and all that stuff. If you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to me directly on Instagram. I always check my DM. I'm very friendly, so I always respond to DM. And you can put a comment down here. But if you want it to be more personal or you don't want to share with the world, you can just send me a DM via Instagram. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really enjoyed doing, making it. And I hope that this information will be useful to anyone, useful for anyone that is thinking of going back to school as they arrive in uh, Canada. It's such a good experience and it helps with integration. And to subscribe to my channel, please subscribe below, share with your friends. I share useful tips that will be helpful uh, for your immigrant journey in Canada. Um, and so to the next video, peace out.